Welcome back to Moko Plays Satisfactory. So last episode we did some getting together some space elevator parts and getting us onto the next tier of technology. So if we go and take a look in our hub here, we now have all of these many options in tier 5 and tier 6 available to us. And we kind of looked at this towards the end of last episode and, and pretty much settled on the, the decision that going through these in order starting with this one, going through this one, and this one, and so forth, makes sense. Uh, and, and definitely oil processing should be our place to start here, because the plastic and the rubber that we're going to be able to generate from this tier is a core requirement of pretty much every one of these additional tiers. Two things that make me kind of think we might want to play this slightly differently once we're past the oil processing milestone is, is around world exploration. I've been doing most of my world exploration off stream, but if you've played any Satisfactory or if you have seen any of that stuff, then you'll know that it's kind of quite challenging to go out there, find things like power slugs and crash sites with hard drives and alternative recipes and stuff, which are integral parts of the game. While you have environmental hazards like the poison gas, which the gas mask would help us combat, or like really challenging vast distances and, and very high cliffs and that sort of thing, which the jetpack would help us combat. So yeah, I'm thinking that while we'll start with oil processing, we may want to do some leapfrogging forward to get these tiers here to help us explore, to help us get more power shards, more alternative recipes, and to make things more sensibly. Similarly, while last time I, I added um, automating encased beam production as a goal, the more I've thought on this, the more I think we might want to hold off on fully automating that, because the default encased beam um, recipe yeah is requires steel beams which are highly inefficient remember last time we were looking at some of the differences between steel beams and steel pipes and there is an alternative recipe i know which i think is called encased industrial pipes where you get pretty much the same output you can put in pretty much the same input but in pipes and pipes are way more cost effective to produce so i think what we might want to do is just do some temporary encased beam production uh, to get ourselves up towards the next set of tech upgrades and then we'll revisit that with permanent encased beam production when we've got that alternate recipe so i really do think that's the way that we want to go however our first goal right now is to automate motor production and again that's because we need it for this tier for oil processing we need motors in volumes that we could kind of handcraft but then we're going to need more motors for industrial manufacturing and for alternate fluid transport, and also for any of the machines that we make here. I think especially the refineries, if I remember rightly, take motors and stuff. So we're just going to need a substantial ongoing amount of motors going forward. So that's going to be the first thing that we look at today. Motors, if I remember rightly, take equal parts, rotors, and stators. And it's a two-to-one recipe to make the motor in an assembler. We are making automatically rotors. We're doing that on the top floor of our iron factory here. And we're making those, if I remember rightly, at 10 per minute. We've actually filled our storage there, which is good. And we're equally, we're creating stators over in this direction in our kind of small steel factory and we're placing those in these storage bins just down here. One of those is making stators, and again, I'm pretty sure we're doing those at 10 per minute. So if we take the default recipe there for motors, if we have 10 of each of these per minute, we can make five motors per minute, and I think that will do us quite nicely for the time being. So that's what we're gonna do. Now we've got one resource that's being produced up at the top of this factory here another resource that's being produced down over where our steel factory is which is you know a, a not inconsiderable distance away um, but we are already building that kind of halfway home to the storage containers we are if we can get a view on this we're producing our stators over there at our steel factory and one of these belts runs it down to storage here so what I'm thinking is that we'll split off our rotor production, whichever one of these is doing rotors, move some rotors over into this direction, we'll belt over some stators from here to here, lift them up to here, and if our target is to make 
five motors per minute, then maybe we've got enough space to work with here to do that. Let's see. In fact, we can do that with a single assembler. Um, so, yeah, that seems like a bit of a no-brainer. Let's add one more assembler here for motor production. And then we'll um, belt that back over to main storage in our base. Okay, so here we are with our motor build done. Um, so, uh, where we were previously, our three rotor assemblers here, here, and here, we're running a line uh, right to left as well, looking at it down to main storage um, and, and going all the way there. What we've done is just reverse that direction here to run everything up into here and added a splitter here. So this splitter serves now to send anything that is needed by the motor build into our new motor build assembler here and then send the rest down into main storage. So that's rotors in for the motor build here. And similarly our stators, this was pretty finicky, more so than maybe I expected to um, to place and, and to run, but that's essentially just coming from our main storage down, sorry, our steel temporary storage down there. This long belt running all the way back into our iron factory and then being lifted up here to give us the stators and the rotors that we need to make our motors, running at five per minute. Uh, and then we've just added on one additional belt to bust those down to main storage here. Let's just nip through. So that's the belt that's running above us. Here is the new one. This is starting to get a little messy, but it does work. And that just adds that on to the end of our uh, nice freeform <laughs> floating uh, collection of lifts there to take that into a new storage container down there in with main storage. So that's motors five per minute, nice and easy, just by splitting off the existing parts that we were already creating. Now, the other thing that we've been up to, because we were gonna need those encased industrial beams in some volume, but not very heavy volume, is I just repurposed these assemblers down here, which were previously set to make one of the space elevator parts. So we're just doing some temporary Concrete into one box, steel beams into another box, and that will come out here. And it's starting to give us our collection of encased industrial beams, which we'll need. So we need uh, about 100 of those, I think, for the next milestone there to unlock the oil production. So I'm just going to let that run for a few minutes to give us enough stock. And then we'll go ahead and unlock that and start to think about oil. Hey, it's very slightly later and we have uh, what we need now. So let's grab those and go and do some tier unlocking. So it's gonna take us into the oil processing tier and what we're gonna do still in this episode, I think we, we might run a little long here, but we'll see how we get on. It's um, really start to, to work with the most basics of oil production. Talk more about that in a second once we've got this stuff unlocked. Milestone reached. Oil acquisition and refining unlocked. Oil based products can now be made. The byproducts of oil refinement can be used after further processing, as seen in the refinery. Caution this is a reminder to minimize the chance of expiration during out of base activities. Cool. All right. And uh, call that stuff done. And let's add ourselves a new goal, which is yeah, temporary basic oil. So, what have we just unlocked? We have unlocked production buildings in terms of the refinery, refined fluid and or solid parts into other parts. Contains conveyor and pipe input and output. So we're starting to mix solid and liquid production there. And we have the oil extractor, which is basically a miner for oil. Um, oil nodes have purity the same way that like other resource nodes do oil or liquid fluid pipes 
have throughput the same way that belts do. I think at this point we are working exclusively with tier 1 pipes which have a throughput of 300 meters cubed per minute. Out of interest, at which point do we get beyond that? Not for some time by the looks of it. Pipeline Engineering Mark 2 right at the end of uh, tier 6 here. Okay, cool. Uh, right, let's just drop that down as a reminder for what we're kind of going to look at next, even if we actually go to Gas Mask Get Pack next. Let's just drop that down anyway. So, working with oil, working with a mix of fluids and solids. We've done some fluid dynamics already in our coal power plant. Over in this direction, we've done things like making sure that we have um, that we don't overload our the, the capacity of our pipes and doing things like adding pipeline pumps to account for head lift. And that stuff holds true of anything that we do with fluid production in the game. So these concepts like having the, um, the pipeline junction cross and kind of a main line and then making sure that we've balanced inputs of our main line as we did with the coal power. So for example, if we look at what's coming up from the water pumps below, here's an input from below and somewhere around here. Here's another one. Uh, and that's because that balances the water that's being produced from our water extractors with the throughput capacity of this pipeline, the 300 meters cubed. We can't just stick all of our inputs at one end and expect the fluid to make its way right to the end here. Um, so th those are concepts that we're going to have to consider when working with oil as well. Oil is more complex than what we've done here though because the oil tech tree um, all produces or much of it produces uh, byproducts. So if we take a look at a refinery here, for example. Looks kind of like a coal generator because it's got the solid input and the, the liquid input as well. It also has a liquid and a solid output. And if we take a look at some of the recipes here, basic plastic for example, feed crude oil in. Okay, oil extractor gives us that. We're going to generate plastic, but as a byproduct, we're going to generate heavy oil residue. So we can't just produce as much plastic as we want, send it into storage, and send it down the line into other recipes without also accounting for this heavy oil residue. And one thing that Satisfactory does not allow you to do is to just flush that away. We can't just feed a pipe into the ocean and have it disappear. Uh, the game is not okay with, with that style of pollution and world destroying. So what we have to do instead is account for the fact that to make two plastic, we also make one meter cubed heavy oil residue. There are recipes that will take advantage of that, like this residual fuel recipe, for example, will take heavy oil residue and make fuel. Uh, and there's also residual plastic, residual rubber. And some of these take byproducts of the, if we're making fuel, for example, we'd create fuel that we want to, but we'd also create polymer resin as a byproduct. So you get this kind of circular flow where to make plastic you create a byproduct and that byproduct can be used to create fuel. And to create rubber you get a byproduct and that byproduct can be used to create fuel. And to create fuel you get a byproduct and that byproduct can be used to create plastic or rubber. And petroleum cokes in there. And there are many alternative recipes as well that make this like fairly, fairly complex and fairly challenging to set up. Uh, all of which is, is a kind of long way of saying that oil production can get quite confusing, quite sort of, it's among the more intense things, especially at this stage of the game, that you have to consider the flow, not only of your desired product, but of your unintended side products as well. Uh, and also with some of those um, byproducts being liquid, what we can't do is, for example, what we've done here with our steel pipe um, construction. What happens if we're making too many steel pipes? Well, let's just send the extra into an awesome sink and this splitter will pretty much 
balance itself out if our storage gets full everything goes in here can't do that with liquids or at least we can't do that until we find a way of packaging those liquids so dealing with the byproducts making sure that we have enough storage or reuse and recycling of those byproducts is a, a big part of considering larger oil builds what I think we're going to do today, because really all we want to do is just get ourselves a handful of plastic and rubber for the next couple of milestones, all of which need like a few hundred of those rather than any huge quantities, is what I like to do at this stage in the game is just set up a very basic oil production where it's manageable in terms of the logistics, in terms of managing the byproducts, and in terms of the power consumption as well to get us a few hundred plastic and rubber to work with to get ourselves to the next tier because when we get up to the tier of having larger pipelines say better power infrastructure and, and that sort of thing then we can revamp and revisit which is why um, we're looking at temporary basic oil production rather than going over the top with oil production from the get-go so first thing that we need to do is find ourselves some crude oil. I have no idea where our nearest is. Got some impure nodes and a normal node. Impure, normal, impure, normal. Alright, I think we're just going to run up and claim this um, this normal node for now, given that it's relatively close to our base. Before we run all the way over there though, one thing we should do is think about the machines that we're going to need to do some oil production. We're going to need some refineries, which each take 10 encased beams and 10 motors, so let's stock back up on those. Need some oil extractors, which take 15 motors and 20 encased beams, but we're only really going to need one oil extractor, I think, to start with. And then everything else is just normal constructors and storage and stuff like that, except maybe fluid buffers, which we haven't looked at so far. Take modular frames, but we've got plenty modular frames. Cool. Alright, I think if we top ourselves up with uh, encased beams and motors, then we will be good. Looks like it's not too far in that direction. We're going to want to run power to it, but I don't think we have a real need to want to transport resources back and forward. I'm thinking we'll just set up the production and set up some storage for plastic and rubber right here. And for the time being, we can just run back down there and get it when we uh, when we want it. Longer term, plastic and rubber gets used enough that we... Oh, I got rid of all of my concrete. That was silly of me. Uh, longer term, plastic and rubber, especially, and, and other things from that tech tree as well, get used enough that we absolutely will want them to be to be coming back to our main storage. Um, but that's a, that's a problem for future us. Oh, right. 
let's do some zooping down here. Oh, power I should be bringing with me. This game looks uh, <laughs> really good at times. It's one of those things that I don't think has got a lot of um, attention at the various kind of landmark stages of the early access of the game, but I feel like even since I started playing the game, which I think was around the update 4 mark, um, it looks much better than, uh, than it used to. Uh, okay, where exactly is our crude oil? Well, that looks like a patch right there. Yep. So we've got that one normal patch right there. A couple of impure patches that we've ran past already. Cool. Well, let's just have that one patch for now and we'll see how we get on. I'm just wondering about where we actually want to build production. I feel like given the terrain here, we're probably going to want to be slightly off the ground. So we probably want to drop down another few levels here. And actually do our main oil production off the ground, which is going to mean that we're going to need to... Um, to lift the crude oil, um, which is fine to do. So we want to balance here between being high up and up that we're clearing kind of much of the landscape, um, while not being too high that we need to run hundreds and hundreds of meters of vertical pipe and deal with tons of, um, what are they called? Pumps, pipeline pumps. That's a decent amount of space to work with, I think. Let's add that in so that go with the look of the thing, and then if we go here. Yeah, well, let's give ourselves one more row. And then let's just ramp all the way down to ground level. Alright, cool. So, that's normal crude oil. And by normal we mean the purity, so that'll be the default, whatever it is, 120 per minute or, or something like that. Uh, so if we drop an oil extractor on that... really too sure which way we want to run the um, piping and stuff as yet I think that way towards the edge of the platform we came in on Let's see how that works yeah I think that should work okay if we run a pipe up through here there or thereabouts Gonna 
for me if it's clipping through like that. Hey, where'd my other power pole go? I'm not sure if I talked about this or not. Hotbars, you have multiple hotbars in Satisfactory. If you notice down at the bottom of the screen there, we're on hotbar number one. If I hold Alt and scroll my mouse wheel, I go to hotbar number two, which uh, I use one as my most common. Oh, nice, is that automatically attaching to the ceiling? That's cool, that's new. I use one as my most common um, solid building stuff, and I use hotbar number two for my most common liquid building stuff. I really, really like the uh, ceiling support thingies that have been added. I didn't realise they'd added them for pipes as well as um, belts. That was really cool. Oh, we haven't connected that to main power yet, have we? That's why that's not running. Yeah, so at default clock speed, that's going to run at 120 meters cubed per minute. If we need more, we can drop some power shards in and we can overclock as far as, I assume, 300 per minute. That will be our pipeline uh, throughput capacity in any case. But certainly in the first incarnation of this build, I doubt we're going to need anything like that to gain a volume. Ooh, boy. Alright, uh, what's going to be a better way of doing that? Let's hop out of that. Whereabouts are we? Are we there? I think. Except that looks terrible, so let's try... there we go. Nice, that's coming in at a pretty sensible location as well, I think. Let's run power up. to put a pump at the bottom. Go to add a second pump, you can see how high the first pump is coming in. It's that kind of blue collar. Just just on that right angle there, so we are going to need a, a second pump here. Not anywhere here, really. That should work. Make sure it's not going to clip through. go and that will give us all of the head lift we need to get it up to our production floor. Alright, so that's a pipeline full of crude oil, which is nice. Now let's take a look at so we've got 120 crude oil per minute coming through or a max of 120. We need some plastic. 30 per minute gives us 20 plastic per minute some rubber, 30 per minute gives us 20 rubber per minute and that's going to generate a certain amount of heavy oil residue between them. We could take that heavy oil residue and make residual fuel. Right now we don't really have a use for fuel. Yeah, 
we have nothing that will use it, so it would be just putting that into storage. So I think the better thing to do, and this is my tendency when I set up my first oil production to get me uh, some, some plastic and some rubber to work with to get the next tiers that let us do things like package fuel and use them in a jetpack, say, um, is just to, uh, to dump the heavy oil residue into storage. One of these fluid buffers. That'll hold 400, I guess, meters cubed of um, any liquid, really. So if we set up a few of those, then what it means is that our refinery producing, say, plastic can keep taking in the, the crude oil, keep producing the plastic, send that heavy oil residue into a fluid buffer, um, and it'll just run like that until the fluid buffer gets full. So periodically we are going to have to come back here and drain that out. Um, I mentioned before that Satisfactory doesn't let us just pipe that into the sea or the void at the edge of the world or anything like that. What it does let you do, though, is if you have pipes, fluids, anything like that, it will let you drain either an individual section or a full pipe network. Uh, when I first started playing the game, I thought that I had to like flush it to somewhere. Turns out it doesn't. You are literally just dumping that out to nowhere. So as long as we come back periodically and do that from our fluid buffers, that'll clear the backlog unsaturate the outputs here so that we can keep our plastic flowing. And obviously the same thing would happen if we um, build up our storage of plastic, say. Um, what we can't do is just run up to a fluid buffer and go, give me some liquid uh, <laughs> heavy oil residue. Um, you, you can't go around running around with that stuff in your hands or in your pockets. Uh, you any sugar around here? Sugar? Sure. There you go. Sorry, it's not in packages. Right, let's set up then. If we have 120 crude oil to play with, that takes 30. That takes 30. They each produce 20 of their various thing. I think we need plastic and rubber in about equal supply right now. So that to me says four refineries. Um to plastic, to rubber. And uh, that'll do us as a starting point. Tell me what we're going to do is give ourselves some verticality. Yeah. So we're going to take our crude oil. And in fact, we don't need to worry about any solid inputs here. This is a really straightforward recipe, which is just liquid input. So we can just run it in this kind of manifold, like so. Technically, we don't need a cross-junction here and a cross-junction here. We could just run the pipes down and curve them. Um, either way works. You can do it like this, so you can just, you know, kind of run it. Run it around like that, for example, but I don't, know, I, I don't mind the look of it with the um, oh, damn it. I do mind the look of that. I don't mind the look of it here where the last one in the chain isn't actually like being split off. Uh, it does make it, you know. Very quick and very easy to set up. Uh, we can curve that pipe here. Or we could add another cross junction there, but then that's going to clip. So, yeah. Curved pipes, it is. Okay. Is what will need power. No, 
nice. So our input's taken care of. Gonna give us a little extra space. Yeah. Let's see why in a moment. Then from this side, so we're going to be outputting plastic and plastic and rubber and rubber, and then each of the liquid outputs will be our heavy oil residue. Um, so obviously if we just run everything out at ground level, we're going to have pipes and belts clipping into each other. So a little bit of uh, verticality is called for, and it's easiest to run the pipes at ground level. Um, and the solids at um, one level higher because you have things like conveyor lifts and you have things like splitters and mergers being able to easily stack on top of each other. Whereas to run pipes with verticality, the only real way to do it is to use like pipeline supports and move them up a level or two. It completely works. You can completely have belts running, you know, underneath those if you get rid of the supports and stuff like that. It's just you're then pumping fluids uphill, which means if you do too much of it, you need to start thinking about, you know, gravity's effect on fluids and do you need extra fuel pumps and stuff in there. So I just tend to run pipes at uh, ground level. I don't think you can, yeah, you can't like easily stack these on top of each other the way that you can do with splitters and mergers for example. Yeah you can do it. Yes, it's just they don't snap as easily. Anyway. Think we're only producing ten. Have your residue from each of these. Not true. Ten per minute. 20 per minute. Okay, so in total we're going to be producing 60 per minute, which is absolutely fine from a pipeline throughput point of view. You just need to consider that in terms of the volume of storage. So, uh, if we're doing our solids at a level higher, then we want to... Um, those down first. we're doing two separate products here so these are going to be two separate belt lines um, but the fluids can all be one uh, like one line as it were okay This bit will be easier to do from uh, ground level, actually. I should have really had 
want this running the other direction. <laughs> this was why I was doing the ground level stuff first, so that I didn't keep having to uh, delete these pipes. But then I go and need to do it anyway. Alright, where's our line? Rubber output going down here, and we'll have our plastic output going down here. And then we just need to make sure that we're connecting pipes everywhere. thing that we need to do is to consider this. Now each one of these holds a certain amount. I forget how much it is but it's not a huge amount. Given that we're going to leave this to run while we're away doing other things and we're not actually going to use the resource we just need to check in periodically to dump it all out. Then I'm just going to set a little array of these. that it can run quite some time and the good thing is with the um, the option to flush either an individual pipe or buffer or flush the entire network then we'll just come and it'll just give us like the flick of one switch to um, go in and drop out the um, heavy oil residue that we're not using for anything right now hope that makes sense. It will become clear when we do have to do it. It's not clear right now. Some of these guys just need recipes and then we should be up and running, really. The rubber. The rubber. Oh, not residual rubber. Regular rubber. Did I do the first one right? Yes, I did. And you are elastic. And so are you. And then with our extra little bit of space here, set up two industrial storage containers. What easy access. have it. We have rubber and we have plastic. I thought I was going to need this area to uh, to run those storage bins into, but there's enough space over here. So let's do that. Some signage on there. Oops. It's rubber. Coolio. Uh, right, and I should have left myself a little walkway after all, because when we come down here, we're going to want to get back to our um, thing, those fluid buffers, um, to be able to flush those every so often. So let's just drop in some walkway crossings here, and then we can get down to ground level, or we can get over here. 
I ever not? So you see these are starting to fill up a tiny amount in each one. However, if we leave these long enough, then even if there is um, space in storage to add more rubber and more plastic, the system will grind to a halt as these backfill as the internal buffers in these machines fill up with heavy oil residue and so every so often we're going to want to come along here and just go full pipe network get rid of all the heavy oil residue I'll drain it from here and from here and from here leaving it to fill back up from here with the byproduct. So we have a hundred nod rubber, we have fifty odd plastic rubber recipe make more. Twenty per minute. I think it's just that that's been running slightly longer than the plastic side has. Yeah, twenty per minute. No, it looks like maybe I neglected the belt. I did neglect the belt. I also made that a splitter and not a merger because I am a stupid person. clipping through the first flow buffer. Hi. Let's just get rid of the very end ones then. And we'll still have more than enough here, I'm sure. Alright, cool. So that gives us some ongoing plastic and rubber. It's great need to let those uh, fill up for a little bit and then we'll be ready to go and unlock that next milestone which we will do next episode so let's mark that off as done let's add to our to-do unlock next milestone and that is going to do it for this episode of satisfactory uh, as always thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one cheers <laughs>